What's that? Looks green. Just like us. No, it's different. It doesn't have a mouth. How does it feed itself? Is it a live organism? Strange. Let's take this back with us. As a specimen. This lesson explains how plants manufacture food through photosynthesis. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define life processes Define autotrophic nutrition Explain the process of photosynthesis Illustrate the importance of chlorophyll through an experiment Illustrate the importance of carbon dioxide through an experiment and illustrate the importance of sunlight through an experiment. I wonder, do the functions of living organisms stop when they are sitting or sleeping? Living organisms perform functions like synthesizing proteins and growing even while they don't seem to be doing anything specific. The processes that help in carrying out these metabolic functions are collectively called life processes. In order to perform these life processes, living organisms need energy. This energy is obtained from food. This entire process of obtaining energy from food is called nutrition. The nutritional processes of living organisms are decided by how complex the organisms are. Plants and a few bacteria use inorganic substances to prepare their food in the form of organic compounds. So they are called autotrophs. The process of nutrition in autotrophs is known as autotrophic nutrition. Fungi and animals cannot prepare their own food and directly or indirectly depend on autotrophs for their food. Such organisms are called heterotrophs and the process of nutrition in heterotrophs is called heterotrophic nutrition. So, this plant can prepare its own food? That's right. Plants prepare food through photosynthesis. The process of using energy in sunlight to convert water and carbon dioxide into carbohydrates and oxygen is called photosynthesis. Let's look at the basic raw materials needed to perform photosynthesis. Sunlight acts as a source of energy. Carbon dioxide is obtained from the atmosphere. Water is absorbed from the soil by the roots of plants. Leaves have tiny pores on their surface called stomata. Stomata let in the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide then diffuses into cell organelles called chloroplasts, which carry out photosynthesis. Let's take a closer look at these stomata. If the stomata are open all the time, the plant may lose large amounts of water through them. To prevent this, the stomata are opened only when the plant needs carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Stomata contain guard cells that regulate the opening and closing of stomata. 
when water flows into them, the guard cells swell and open up the stomata. Similarly, if the guard cells shrink, the pore closes. Chloroplasts are bound by a double membrane. They contain closely packed flattened sacs called thylakoids arranged in piles called granum. These granum lie in a colorless ground substance called stroma. Thylakoids contain a pigment called chlorophyll which traps solar energy. Interesting! And how does the process of photosynthesis take place? Photosynthesis involves a series of photochemical reactions that consists of two phases, light and dark reactions. Light reaction takes place in the thylakoids of the chloroplast. Dark reaction takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. The energy carriers involved in photosynthesis are ATP, adenosine triphosphate, acts as an energy carrier. The third phosphate group in ATP breaks up releasing ADP, phosphate and energy. NADP is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate that is used as an electron carrier. NADPH is the reduced form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate that serves as an energy carrier. As the name suggests, light reaction takes place in the presence of sunlight. Using light energy, water molecules split up to release oxygen. The chlorophyll in the thylakoids of chloroplast traps light energy and excites an electron. This excited electron converts light energy into chemical energy and this chemical energy is stored as ATP and NADPH. Thus, light reaction produces the energy source ATP and NADPH but not the food. Dark reaction takes place in the stroma of the chloroplasts by reducing carbon dioxide to carbohydrates, utilizing energy from ATP. It can take place with or without the presence of sunlight. Hence the name dark reaction. By the end of dark reaction, plants prepare glucose. This glucose is used immediately by the cell or stored in the form of starch. I really detest this light. I wish there was no sunlight on earth. Well, actually sunlight is essential for the process of photosynthesis. Let's try this experiment to prove it. Select two leaves of approximately the same size from a healthy potted plant. Cover one of the leaves with a black card as shown in the diagram. Place the potted plant in sunlight for several hours. Test both the leaves for the presence of starch using the iodine test. To conduct an iodine test, dip both the leaves in boiling water for a minute to kill the cells. Next, boil the leaves in methylated spirit over a water bath till they become pale due to the removal of chlorophyll. You will find that the surface of the leaf becomes hard and brittle. 
Place the leaves in a dish and pour iodine solution over them. You will find that the leaf which had been covered with the black card becomes brown. The uncovered leaf becomes blue-black, indicating the presence of starch. Since the leaf of the plant that was exposed to sunlight turned blue-black, you can conclude that light is essential for photosynthesis. Let's conduct a small experiment to prove that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis to take place. Take a potted plant that has variegated leaves, such as crotons. Keep the plant in a dark room for three days so that all the starch gets used up. Now keep the potted plant in sunlight for six hours. Pluck a leaf from the plant. Mark the green areas in it and trace them using a sheet of tracing paper. Now dip the leaf in boiling water for a few minutes. This process destroys all the enzymes in the leaf and stops any further chemical changes from taking place. After boiling, immerse the leaf in a beaker of alcohol. Place the beaker in a water bath and heat it till the alcohol begins to boil. You will see that the leaf becomes colorless as it loses its chlorophyll. Now, dip the leaf in a dilute solution of iodine for a few minutes. The green portions of the leaf turn blue-black, indicating the presence of starch. The non-green portions of the leaf turn brown, indicating that starch has not been formed. Since only the green portions of the leaf turned blue-black, you can infer that chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis to occur. Let's carry out an experiment to prove that carbon dioxide is vital for photosynthesis. Take two healthy potted plants of the same size. Keep the potted plants in a dark room for three days. Now, place a watch glass containing potassium hydroxide beside one of the potted plants. Potassium hydroxide is used to absorb carbon dioxide. Next, cover both the plants with separate bell jars as shown. Seal the bottom of the bell jars to the glass bottom surface so that the setup is airtight. Keep the plants in sunlight for about two hours. Pluck a leaf from each plant and check for the presence of starch using the iodine test. The leaf which was exposed to air turns blue-black. This shows that starch was formed by the process of photosynthesis using carbon dioxide in the bell jar. The leaf from the plant that had potassium hydroxide in the bell jar does not become blue-black. This means photosynthesis did not take place. This was due to the absence of carbon dioxide in the bell jar. This proves that photosynthesis cannot take place without carbon dioxide. Water is another important raw material required for photosynthesis. Terrestrial plants take up water from the soil through their roots. Carbohydrate formation is not possible without the presence of water. Apart from water, plants also absorb nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, iron and magnesium from the soil. Nitrogen is taken in by plants in the form of inorganic nitrates or nitrites. Bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen 
during nitrogen fixation which are then utilized by the plants in the form of ammonia.